Uh, well, well, the cliche is that football is a game of two halves. Uh, that was true today. Yeah, I suppose so. Um, obviously, the first what was it two minutes where we could see the own goal, um, which puts us on the back foot straight away. And we know Forest Green, you know, they were going to come here fighting. Um, new manager, it's always kind of hard to tell how it's going to go, and that was probably the worst possible start. And then, you know, they had a couple of balls that went in behind, and you know they got a second goal, and we had to regroup at half time. And it was one of them where we said it, it's down to us now how much we really really want it and you know you can talk about the red card that does change games and it certainly did today but um no proud of proud of the boys today because we dug in deep and you know we got our, our due rewards in the end you mentioned the red card because the team needed a lift that certainly got the crowd up and you were able to harness that almost immediately yeah well that, that, that's what happens you know when, the, when you get the crowd on your side whether it's a goal or a red card or a mistake anything just to get and these fans are amazing you know any any little excuse to get up and, and about it they'll, they'll do it and that was a perfect excuse for us and you got the two goals in in double quick time yeah i, I mean the first one i think it's come from a knee in the end um, I'll say I tried guiding it in, but you know, just a bit of an instinctive finish. And then I said to Payne at half time, he was having the beating of the of the left back, just get it down and, and zip it across the floor. If it doesn't come off uh, me or, or Seb or Omar, whoever is up there, it's going to come off a defender. And luckily, I was on the end of it. And from that point on, you had the momentum. And in credit to the team, you kept your foot on the gas, didn't you? Yeah, we did. I mean, it was one of them. It was how many can we go and get now? Because the momentum was in our in our favour. Um, obviously, we had the numerical advantage as well. I was gutted I didn't get the hat trick in the end because I had the same scenario when we played Forest Green away um, earlier on in the season. But no, over the moon um, as a group, as a collective, as you know, as a team, that, that was a massive result. A little birdie tells me you promised the club secretary a hat trick for some car parking place in the places today. Is that true? Uh, yeah, it is true. <laughs> to be fair, I, I, I always message him late. I'm always so bad at it. And he said, right today, I want a hat trick. And I said, oh, I'll do my best. I'll do what I can. And you know. Um, Unluckily, I didn't get there today, but hopefully see, soon come, uh, I'll get that hat-trick. Uh, jokes aside, as you were disappointed at the weekend, disappointed in the first half, I asked the manager, how can you harness the momentum that you got from that second half and take it into Friday night against Crew? Well, we're at home, so again, that's a massive advantage for us because our fans, like I said, are brilliant. You know, they get behind us when, as soon as we can see that second goal, you can hear them straight away. They're, they're singing a the song, so um, it's about using that momentum in, into crew. Um, I'm not sure how they got on today, but we've just got to be on the front foot like we are. I think everyone knows Newport as a club; they're better when they're on the front foot. And you know, if we can take that second half into the into into crew from minute one, um, we'll give ourselves a good chance. And about being consistent, which of late you haven't mm. been able to do, have you? Yeah, it's a key word that gets thrown around between like my mates, my family, in the changing rooms. You know, it's that consistency, and you know that's something that we've been lacking, and it is it stings us because <clears throat> I think we're seven or eight points off playoffs, and you know we go on a little bit of a run, and then we'll, we'll crash down, and it's just finding a bit of a you know a steady state, turning the losses into draws, and the draws into wins, and you know we'll keep plugging away, we keep doing it, but. Um, yeah, we've just got to keep believing. And if you can find that, with this festive mm. schedule, it allows you the opportunity to make great st uh, strides in that table. Yeah, I mean, between Wrexham and the Sutton game, I think we've got four or five fixtures. So if you put a little run together then, um, it, it can really you know, push up the table. Obviously, we didn't get the result we wanted at Wrexham. Um, today, second half saved us and we, we've got a win. Now we've got to just take that into crew and then hopefully on to, um, to Sutton away. And last couple from me, uh, your own personal scoring feats go from strength to strength. To strength. Uh, what is your goal scoring target for this season? Do you know what? I didn't set a target. Last year I think I scored four goals in all competitions. So, you know, someone has said to me at the start of the season, he's going to have eight goals over the course of the season, um, play games, um, and I, I would have been happy. But, you know, I don't really set targets. It's not something I do. Um, I've said in interviews before that's what I do do, but I actually don't. So I'm telling a porky there. Um, but no, I'm happy just as long as I can contribute towards the team. Um, it looks good individually for me, but it's first and foremost about the team, and that's all about getting those three points and getting up the table.